Greetings, fellow belly hamsters. It is fall, year of the plague 2020, and you may not be getting out much, so I'm here to take you on a virtual tour of Cornwall Park. 70 acres of nature and recreation in the heart of our fair city. First, some history. The Pacific Northwest was once covered by old growth forests reaching from the mountains to the sea. Large Douglas firs, spruce, hemlock, and cedar trees grew west of the Cascade Range. Some firs grew over 300 feet tall and some cedars reached 15 feet in diameter. Settlers arrived here in the mid-19th century and soon timber was being harvested. In a matter of a few decades, most of the old growth was gone. This panoramic photograph was taken in 1909, the same year that Bertha Fisher, a member of the Bellingham Elite and daughter of Bellingham Bay Improvement Company founder Pierre Cornwall, donated 65 acres of logged over land to the city to be made into a park, on condition that the park would be at all times known as Cornwall Memorial Park. First, because of lack of funding, minor improvements were made to the park. But in 1918, J.J. Donovan and Puget Sound Traction and Power Company installed an arch at the Meridian Street entrance to the park. In 1922, a $30,000 bequest from the Fisher Estate enabled intensive landscaping and planting, as well as the construction of a south entrance at Indiana and Dock Street which was renamed Cornwall Avenue in 1924. It was also made to a small municipal auto camp in the park. Visitors could set up tents next to their cars, an option to staying in a hotel. The camp was popular but operated at a loss year in and year out and was closed in 1927. A few hundred yards west of the park on Squalicum Creek was the Bellingham Coal Mines which provided fuel for the cement plant in Concrete, Washington. In the mid-1920s, it was one of the largest mines in the state. It closed in the 1950s. In the mid-1930s, Federal New Deal dollars, the WPA, built the park's early facilities, including lawn bowling greens. Bellingham Lawn Bowling Club built a clubhouse in 1938, which later became the caretaker's residence. And then, from 1975 to 2017, the Parks and Recreation Administration Office. Originally, a road ran from one end of the park to the other, but speeders were taking advantage of the shortcut, so it was redesigned into two unconnected roads in the 1980s. This is one of the main trails of the park. There are one and a half miles of trails in this 70 acre semi-natural oasis in a densely populated area of Bellingham. The trails are ideal for a bit of after work exercise or to relieve cabin fever during, you know, the pandemic or to just commune with the trees. There are many secondary trails, some with massive routes exposed by years of foot traffic and weather. In other areas, the bedrock is exposed. The secondary trails have natural undergrowth which makes a perfect setting for running or hiking. Bicycling is very popular in the park year-round.
Holy moly, belly hamsters, be careful on the trails. The Cascade Cross Bandit Cross is an annual bicycle race in Cornwall Park where young and the not so young pit their cycling skill against the clock on a challenging course. The northern part of the park has amenities such as a playground and a spray park, picnic tables and a covered picnic area, restrooms, a basketball court, and the first five holes of a disc golf course. Undergrowth is scarce under the mature Douglas fir and cedar trees where a nine-hole disc golf course provides recreation for many young people. Disc golf is one of the fastest growing sports in the world. The goal of disc golf is to throw a frisbee from different distances and around obstacles to make it into a steel basket target. The lowest number of throws wins. Squalicum Creek flows through the north end of the park on its way to Bellingham Bay. Behind me is the footbridge that crosses the creek where a series of pools have formed in the sandstone bedrock. Squalicum Creek supports spawning chum salmon in the fall. The stream can be a mere trickle in the summer to a torrent in our winter rainy season. Tennis and pickleball courts, a regulation horseshoe pit, a top playground, picnic tables and a covered picnic area, restrooms and the last four holes of a disc golf course are found in the central to southern area of the park. Centrally located in the park, the tennis and pickleball courts are very popular. Close by are the regulation horseshoe pits constructed by the WPA in the 1930s. There are many regulation pits. Some are undercover so the game can go on despite rain or snow. The Bellingham Horseshoe Club members do the maintenance themselves. Okay Bellinghamsters, I've saved the best for last. The trees! The park is a mixture of native stands of Douglas fir and western red cedar and a number of exotic and invasive species. We have a lovely contrast here between western red cedar, Douglas fir, and our grand fir. True firs are different from Douglas firs in that their cones grow upright, whereas the uh, Douglas fir cones are pendant. This right here is our uh, tallest grand fir in the city, 185 feet. I put the uh, range finder on it, measured it about four or five years ago. It might even be a couple, uh, a couple feet taller than that. There are many varieties of magnolia in the park. In the fall, the fruit resembles a pine cone. Inside is a small berry-like fruit 
that is edible in some species. The Sylvia Grace Magnolia Collection began in 1995 with 80 trees. Most are found near Squalica Creek, but many can be found elsewhere on the grounds. The trees bloom from March through May. This western red cedar at the meridian entrance to the park is one of the biggest in town. Nearby is a healthy Port Orford cedar and a Japanese conifer called Plume Sawara Cypress. Hey Bellinghamsters, it's been a pleasure to show you around Cornwall Memorial Park. I thought I'd close this out in the style of Stuart Little. Nice wheels, huh? Be careful out there! That's all, folks.